Peter Townsend and Roger Daltrey, the Who. And welcome from guys. Uh, Good to be here. I, I realize you must have, you must have had quite a rush getting uh, over. No, well, okay. we uh, arrived about two uh, thirty, but we, we got took some <laughs> we got lost. Wrong yeah. exits getting in, and then when we did get in, we kind of caught the rush out. So we've been a little uh, slowed up. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, I, I can't really be. Uh, Ter terribly upset about you being late because I'd much rather have you here live so people can talk to you on That's the rap good. lines too yeah. That's good. Than, than just to tape record the whole thing. But anyway, welcome to the States. How many, what, is this your second or third or, or fourth tour of the States now? Seventh. Seventh? Wow. <laughs> Somebody called me the other night and wanted to know uh, which concert to go to tonight because he was hassled uh, about, you know, there were a number of concerts and he, he wasn't sure how much money you go to Fort for how many different concerts and my immediate advice I just was, spoke to someone yeah. sorry I just yeah. spoke to someone that's coming all four so. <laughs> <laughs> well uh, the, the concerts that are going on this weekend are worth it I told him I, I suggested that, that he go to your concert because uh, we don't get to see you as often as we get to see a lot of the, the hometown acts mm -hmm. and so forth we, we play in New York practically every time we come in mm -hmm. and uh, we try to appear and as good a venue we can in New York. I think the film was probably the best for us because we can... Uh, I don't know. It's the problem is with, with places like the film more is that they've got such a big reputation is, is that you tend to get very nervous about them. And this affects your performance. And I've heard this story from a lot of English acts. They get kind of overawed by the reputation of the club and so their acts are impaired. You know, sometimes I feel like I'd like to come over and play Madison Square Gardens and... Well, you've been out places <laughs> like the scene for jams and stuff like that, haven't you? Right. Well, some of our, our guys are into that. Mm-hmm. It's very <laughs> nice to go and see Jimi Hendrix for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Quick question. Uh, everybody is, is excited right now because uh, today is the day that, uh, that Tommy goes into the stores, I understand. Yeah. And until, uh, until today, everybody's only been able to hear him on the air from the stations yeah. that had copies. Um, Howard Smith, who writes uh, for the Village Voice and who uh, broadcasts on our station, uh, had a letter that I believe you had written, Peter, uh, explaining about some problems that you had uh, with the with the topic of, of the rock opera. Yeah. And so forth. Can, would you explain it for us? Yeah, well, when Pinball Wizard came out, which was supposed to be uh, like a trailer, mm -hmm. really, to the album, uh, it was the str it's the strongest track for a single uh, we kind of got a lot of uh, people upset because of the the fact that the, it was a story it was a kind of a song about a deaf dumb and blind boy and uh, in England uh, I started to read a few of the uh, it was mainly in the, the uh, teen magazines that people were kind of announcing it as uh, uh, the who's who's opera was what sick a <laughs> sick <laughs> Who, the Who's Opera will soon be out uh, uh, dealing with uh, questionable material or something. So I, I I quickly panicked and wrote letters letters to kind of everybody that I I could think of and uh, tried to kind of stop stop. I mean, we didn't want people to have a preconception to the album that we were leaning on any kind of sensational. Uh, thing in order to get album sales I mean mm -hmm. it's not supposed to be uh, a playing on 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 the fact that the boy's deaf dumb and blind it's just that the uh, the story happens to be about this boy and and his his life and uh, the deaf dumb and blindness is 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 part of the the uh, uh, the bad side and mm -hmm. there are other things which are a part of the good side Right. I think I think the problem probably was with the album being so uh, important in in understanding the whole story that Pimble was being taken out as a little clip did tend to give the impression that we were just being <laughs> kind of sensationalism. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, musically, it's pretty obviously got to be the the, uh, the track that would make the the best forty five. Yeah, right. right. Well, we felt this as soon as we kind of heard it. We were against releasing it. Actually, the Who were. Uh, uh, because we f we felt that uh, we wanted the album to, uh, not to pull any punches, uh, but I think I think we could uh, we could say now that 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 it's probably done us a lot of good to put out Pinball Wizard. I kind of think that there might still be a few people that are, that 
uh, won't listen to the album because of Pinball Wizard because they think it might deal with questionable material or might stop their kids buying the album or something like this. But I think that if they do get a chance to hear the album in full as they can... On no, we played it in full. Right, for yeah. One first I, I, might, I might tell you fellas this. Uh, it may be at home you had some hassle that way. Yeah. So far, and I have these direct lines into the studios, a lot of people call me and so far then we've been playing the album. There hasn't one person been concerned in that area whatsoever. That's good. They take it exactly as you apparently yeah. intended it. Let's listen to the overture. I got for the Who. Babalu here, and we'll be uh, talking to Roger Daltrey and Peter Townsend again very shortly. First, however, it came to uh, uh, a rock revival, and I don't mean just the, uh, the the current rock revival. England, not long ago, Britain went through a, a whole old rock revival, Chuck Berry and, right. and the whole scene. And the States are just really going through that now. Uh, but at the same time that's happening, there's a whole country thing, partly because of uh, the, the number of groups that are going to Nashville to record, and uh, partly because uh, Bob Dylan is, is showing so much country influence in, in his music and so forth. Uh, in Britain, are they at all uh, uh, involved in, in quote-unquote American country music, uh, except from American artists or any, any British artists getting involved in that? It's starting to get pushed over there, like uh, the move. I think they're doing country now, aren't they? They're starting to do country music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what 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 I what I uh, felt about the English rock revival is is that uh, uh, did help to kind of bring the music of people like Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley to people that weren't brought up on him. Uh, but there's nothing like being brought up on him, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a bit of a drag to have it thrown back at you. A lot of Chuck Berry stuff can be out of context. It's very nice to see him live and hear him add a few update verses to the end of each chorus, which is what he does. And he step across the stage. He, yeah, yeah, and he keeps his songs up to date, you know? Uh -huh. Like uh, in the old song when it was like a 59 Ford, he says 69 Ford or whatever it is, you know? <laughs> and the, uh, the, uh, the, other, the other thing is in this country, the rock revival seems to lean very heavily on a lot of the chart material of uh, the 50s and the late 50s. And I don't think much of that is very good at all. That's probably not what really influenced the musicians oh, who are running today. I mean, the kind of rock that instituted the category rock is Chuck Berry, is uh, Bo Diddley, Jerry Lee Lewis, uh, rhythm and blues musicians like Muddy Waters, Howling Wolf, and, and even Coasters, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And even even uh, uh, country blues, blues musicians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the country thing is something which doesn't surprise me at all because I've always loved country music, and uh, particularly the more homegrown country music. I've never been uh, too favorably disposed to kind of... Uh, Tin Pan Valley. No, but I really <laughs> like... I've, I've always liked bluegrass. Bluegrass to me has always had a kind of an eastern quality mm -hmm. to it with the, uh, the banjo banging away with a drone note going, and it seems like... Uh, a lot of the feeling of it is a rhythmic one. Mm -hmm. Although it seems very coarse at first, there's a lot of soul in bluegrass music, and uh, and it, that is what is emerging in modern country and western. And uh, like the Burrito Brothers uh, uh, are a, more of a modern country and western sound. Uh, but really all they're doing is, is they're injecting some fresh enthusiasm into it. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you for a, a current status report on something. Maybe from now on, when people say the Who, the first thing that they'll say is Tommy and the rock opera. I so. But up until <laughs> now, any time you said the Who, no matter how fine albums like the, the Who sell out and so forth were, immediately somebody said my generation. And you guys probably represent an entire generation in Britain of the, the, the mod revolution. Right. And well, so we, forth. We always try to do that. <laughs> well, uh, what would you say? Fixed. What would you say is it was fixed? <laughs> what would you say is the state of the mod generation in Britain today? Have they have they changed? No, exactly the same. <laughs> That's the bring down. <laughs> <laughs> they really are. Yeah. Well, then we're entitled to play the record right. now. Then all our mods have grown up, and then young mods are taken over, but they haven't sort of gone anywhere in their heads. So but mods are still mods. Yeah. Right. And the generation is about the Mark same. Mods are Talk directly to people. Uh, and they're the people that want to know what things. The what are they asking you on the rap line? I mean, got to Pardon? The one in the what kind of questions are, are those? They're asking, asking the kind phone? of things about how long 
the album took to um, make and uh, <laughs> Don't tell about that. We what what we were trying to do with it, where, where we're playing, when we're coming back, how long we're here. Uh, well, we've got who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Uh, talking to? How long did it take you to make uh, Tommy? Uh, it it took us about from the original conception of the thing, which um, which, which is is something we've wanted to do really ever since we finished Who Sell Out. And ever since we did the mini opera on the Happy Jack album, it was kind of something which, which the very nature of those two events indicated to us that this is one something we wanted to do was to get an album and have a storyline and have the whole thing tight and musically mm -hmm. continuous, and still retain the rock, rock, rock and roll nature of the thing. And uh, we started to think about this probably about two years ago. It's a real uh, interesting question here because it is it may. This question may arise out of uh, the differences in the way English is spoken in the States and the way it's spoken in Britain. Yeah, the yeah. same word can mean different things. Uh, you call Tommy a rock opera. Yeah. Opera, at least at home here, uh, has a very highbrow, uh, elegant feeling about it. When you oh, it say does in England, too. Well, Do you intend it as such? Okay. Uh, we, we, uh, we've never really used the the title ourself for our copper it was something which came as a natural development uh, in conversation mm -hmm. because it's not essentially a musical it's not something which is going to be staged as such mm -hmm. it's not as simple as a musical it's not uh, in other words the ingredients of the songs uh, aren't there to uh, put across a mood or a feeling of an age or a feeling of a of a, a society they're meant to tell a direct story in a literary manner mm -hmm. and uh, of course there are very few real operas that have done this most operas have got very shoddy sort of plots they end up really the, musical right the good thing about opera of course is that the the performances by the singers and the music itself which is mm -hmm. you know it's, it's something i'm very fond of the opera and our manager too is very fond of the opera and uh, my favorites are wagner and marla people mm -hmm. like that and i don't really like italian opera which i think is what most people think of when they think of opera mm -hmm. la traviata and stuff like that because they tend to be the lighter opera no. <laughs> and figaro and all that <laughs> yeah the heavier to place, opera to place him next to uh to opera may, may uh may cause some fun uh, if you're into Wagner, which is very heavy music, yeah. uh, you're also obviously from your reaction when I asked you about it, both of you as a matter of fact, into Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What do you think of his new album? Uh, well, I don't know whether you've heard a lot of it. Well, just a rough bits of it. And I'm, I think it's okay. Why do you come in on the mic a little bit? Sid? I step forward for it and I really like it. You don't? I, I, I really do. Oh, you do really like it? I really like the way he sings it. Yeah, well, I, 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 I think it's a natural development for Dylan. I kind of feel that he's... Well, he always does like Johnny Cash a lot of ages and ages ago. <laughs> Johnny Cash, wow, yeah. Well, here's one you picked out from the album. I did, I did about seven on our last album. Do you remember that? Oh, as a matter of fact, yeah. Oh, I have to tell you about it. You know, our sister station plays jingles, yeah. which uh, are the same package um, as yeah. the Radio London jingles. No. Really? Yeah, we have more fun with those. Yeah. We had some trouble from the uh, people that make the jingles, but we eventually sorted that out because we 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 stole those jingles. But Bill Meeks is a nice man. Yeah. Well, we, he 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 was he was flattered and pleased that we used them, but he was kind of angry that we didn't pay him. <laughs> so we eventually had to pay him. Well, first for us anyway, the first time on our air that Peter Townsend has ever done a commercial live. Right. Good luck. Here we go. This one's for the Fillmore East, and it's for tonight and tomorrow night, May the 16th and 17th. Uh, we're going to be there. That's The Who, a uh, band called Sweetwater. It's a beautiful day, and, of course, the Joshua Light Show, which has got to be one of the best, or the best, uh, coming on the 23rd of May and the 24th. There's Sly and the Family Stone, and that's... Uh, one of my favorite groups, recording groups, anyway, I've never seen them live. They're vegetarians, folks. <laughs> For full ticket information, call 777-5260. 777-5260. Uh, this, this weekend, it's us, The Who, and Sweetwater. It's a beautiful day at the Fillmore East. Better make it a point. I, I have it on, uh, well, let's put it this way. I don't have it as, uh, as, as gospel information. But I understand there was an entire Boy Scout troop that was in, uh, intending to go to the show tonight. Really? Yeah. Unfortunately, they had a hassle with their transportation, and they freed the tickets. 
So there may be some tickets left for tonight. I, I'm pretty sure tomorrow is sold out. Yeah. But there may be some left for tonight. That's good and, news. Uh, you know, so check with the Fillmore. Give them the number again. Uh, it's 777-5260. Yeah, check them and see if there are any tickets left. And if there are, you really ought to make the show. I am. Credence <laughs> Finkel is, uh, is getting people to, to talk to you on a, on a, let's put it this way, uh, it's person, it's person, to person to person, man to man sort of way, mm -hmm. uh, so that they don't have any preconceptions to you and aren't too apologetic to the fact that perhaps you're a bit tired or that you've just done a good show or a bad show or an indifferent show. And so it's very difficult to set up a kind of a good relationship, whereas telephone reduces everybody to their right size. Mm -hmm. And uh, it us, 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 us into so, yeah. it. Puts them all in a bag, <laughs> as Lennon would say. <laughs> yeah. And I think, I think it's, it's, it's very important, you know. Uh, I wanted, to, I wanted to ask you something about the the Magic Bus album, the yeah. Who on Tour. It's a very strange album for some reason. It's a very uh, disappointing album for us. Well, there were things on it that were awfully we nice. disgusted at the time. <laughs> why, why, we were in tears. Why? We were recording Tommy and we were enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> they told us that had been released. Yeah, we were kind of worried that all the talk that we'd, we'd gone into, a lot of heavy pre-hype on our new album that was going to be coming out. I know with a lot of people we were pulling punches. We weren't telling them what sort of album it was going to be. We were just sort of saying, but wait till you hear our next album. It's going to be the best thing we've ever done. And out came Magic Bus. <laughs> 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 now, we, we've got a commitment to Decca Records to make a certain number of albums per year. And at that point, we were about four albums behind. <laughs> so they just had to do it, you know? Uh -huh. And we had to allow them to do it because Tommy was taking looked like taking another year at that point, and in fact did take another year, you know? But when was that put out? That was put out last summer, right? Mm -hmm. Or no, autumn of last year. At any rate, in the middle of last yeah. year. Well, main, our main complaint about that record was the, the cover. Uh, that mm. that kind of cover, you know, that just is uh, not... Who's Greatest Hits? Mm. <laughs> Well, that's an album it's I'd like to see. The English cover's even worse. The English cover's even worse, and I mean... There, there's something interesting. Uh, right now, one, one of my favorite cuts that I play is a, a Jimi Hendrix uh, cut of Red House. Yeah. yeah. But you know that on the American edition of uh, the Are You Experienced album, this cut did not appear. This is something which I've heard about and which really amazes me. But I mean, it seems like very often there are cuts on the British versions of an album that uh, that do not appear. Well, there's a lot of reasons for this. There's a lot of reasons which kids probably wouldn't understand, and so they would c kind of get uptight. One of the things is, is that you can get more minutes on an English album because the regulations are different. Mm -hmm. The other thing is is that uh, Red House uh, is a, a, a number which has been rewritten, reworded, and the uh, compositional credits have been credited to Jimmy, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, in England and in Europe, the rights had folded for the, that song, but in the States they were still in existence. So in other words, you can play the English cut. And mm -hmm. I, think, I think that Red House will be out s soon in this country, or probably... Yeah, well, it's uh, Warner Brothers has sent around a, uh, uh, I guess, a pre-release type thing. You know, I with think the, that with would the be new version a big it. single for it, thing. because well, it's, it's good blues music. I agree. Know, it's, it's very good. We get we, the new version, the one that's going to be released, yeah. I guess, is the one that I've been playing. And yeah. tremendous reaction to a lot of people. That's good. Like, well, let's let's go back to Magic Bus anyway for just a minute. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That Eyesight to the Blind was uh, taken originally from uh, uh, from a blues song, and he couldn't remember offhand who had written it, and that's I didn't have the album handy. Absolutely had it right. Picture. Yeah, we uh, we took this from at well, the, we got it from a Mose Allison album called Mose Allison Sings. And we've always been a fan of Mose Ellison. We play a song of his on the stage called Young Man Blues, which we like. Uh -huh. And uh, this cut was something which fell very much into the flow of the album. It was a, It's about a, uh, a guy bragging about his girl, saying that she's so groovy and she's so special in every way that, that, that she, can, she can make the dumb speak and she can make the blind see and she can make the deaf hear. And uh, this fitted in very well before a song called The Acid Queen, mm -hmm. uh, like he's introducing his wife. And we co called it The Hawker, and it is credited to the guy that wrote it on the album, and that person is somebody called Sonny Boy Williamson. Yeah, I should say that uh, the reason that we couldn't tell 
right away who had written it is because we play our music off prepared tape cartridges right. and I didn't have the album in front of me to check it out yeah. or we would have settled it last yeah. night. It's nice to have, have the cover and particularly the words to find out who's saying what at what particular mm -hmm. time. It's difficult to tell the difference between our voices in the Who and uh, so we don't try to represent any particular characters individually, I mean, mm -hmm. because it would be a waste of time. Nobody can tell the difference between our voices even if we try. So you make it a point to let people yeah. know. So what, what, what happens is in when you read the words down, you can see like that like one chorus is being sung by by uh, Tommy's inner self or one song is being sung by his mother or that one this kind of thing. Just oh, so I that you roughly you know where the action is uh -huh. lies and, and it helps to understand the story better too. Mm -hmm. So uh, don't don't buy cartridge packs, folks. <laughs> I don't know. As a matter of fact, no, the cartridge packs, the commercial cartridge packs, will probably have that material on it. Yeah, that's um, good. Well, ours will be a twin pack, so there'll probably be quite a heavy amount of literature available with it. I hope so, because it's quite important to get did, it. Did you say before, I, I don't recall whether it was on the phone or on the air, that with the album there comes a program? Uh, that, uh, yeah, this is what we're talking this about. Is what, oh, yeah, this is what's on the program. Yeah, and it's, it's got illustrations, illustrations and the words of the thing, and, and uh, uh, just, it just tells you who says what, when. There's, mm. no, there's no explanations, we, you know, didn't want to lay it down too tight. Mm. Well, again, thank you both. Welcome for the seventh time to the States. Yeah, wow. Thank uh, you. <laughs> where do you go from New York? You just came from Boston. We came from Boston... Pr before that, Detroit, and we've really dug both towns very much. And we've played at the Grandy Ballroom before, but never at the Boston Tea Party. And that was a good good place to play. And uh, f for one of the first times in our career, we're playing at the Fillmore without being too nervous about it. So it should be a good show. <laughs> okay. I'll be there to see it, and I hope everybody else yeah. can get in well. Yeah. Thanks. All right, take care. Have a good show tonight. Yeah, Thank you. Bye.